Hello, my brush lads, lasses, and everyone in between. Tyler here to bring you another Commander Deck Tech. Now, this is one that I have mentioned a lot in the past, but I haven't actually gotten around to actually doing it yet. So I think it's time to give it the attention it deserves. Today's deck is Arvad, the Cursed, and the Heroes of Legend. The deck focuses on Legends Matter, so we run as many legendary cards as we can. Arvad himself is 3 white black for a 3-3 legendary vampire knight with lifelink and death touch, who also gives a blanket anthem of plus 2 plus 2 to all of our other legendary creatures. Having this kind of anthem effect available in the command zone can give our creatures that added boost that we need to secure a victory. The cool part about this deck is how completely flexible and versatile it is. With the exception of a handful of Legends Matter support cards, most legendary creatures are kind of meant to act almost entirely on their own, giving us a wide selection of abilities to choose from when picking our cards. I'm always tweaking my decks as I go, so feel free to suggest your favorite cards down in the comment section below. Without further ado, let's get on to our first two creatures, who are, ironically, the only non-legendary creatures that we run. Thalia's Lancers and Kitsune Healer are our only non-legendary creatures, with the Lancers letting us tutor up any legendary card when they ETB, and the Healer being able to prevent all damage dealt to a target legendary creature just by tapping. The Lancers are probably my favorite of the two, as they don't specify searching for a creature, giving us access to some enchantments, artifacts, planeswalkers, lands, and even a couple of sorceries, but we'll cover them later. First, let's look at our cast of legends. Rydain is a flying vigilant god that forces our opponent's snow lands to enter tapped, and who taxes all of our opponent's non-creature spells by an additional two generic mana if their CMC is four or greater. She can also be played as her back half, the legendary artifact Valkymira Protector Shield, if we want, which prevents one damage from any source our opponents hit us with and taxes our opponents an additional one generic when they cast a spell or use an ability that targets us or our things, countering that spell or ability if they don't choose to pay that one. Faragoth is a demon rogue with death touch who can boast for one in a black, letting us search our deck for any card and place it on top so long as he has attacked this turn. Tesa, Envoy of Ghosts, comes with Vigilance, Protection from Creatures, and the ability to destroy any creature that deals damage to us while also giving us a 1-1 flying black and white spirit token every time she does. Obsidat, Ghost Council, drains an opponent for two when it enters the battlefield, as well as exiles itself at the end of our turn until our next upkeep, gaining haste and draining for another two when it re-enters. It does a fantastic job dodging all sorcery speed removal, as well as most board wipes, and make sure we can always have a creature ready to go on our turn. Both Erebos's, God of the Dead and Bleak Hearted, are indestructible gods that require a black devotion of five to be considered creatures. God of the Dead stops our opponents from gaining life and lets us pay one in a black and two life to draw a card. Bleak Hearted lets us draw a card whenever any of our creatures die in exchange for two life, and lets us pay one in a black and sacrifice a creature to give another creature minus two minus one until end of turn. Shieldred comes with Swamp Walk, a very nice combo with the Herb Work that we also run, as well as lets us revive creatures from our grave every turn, while making our opponents sacrifice one on theirs. Kyrick has Lifelink, gains a plus one plus one counter whenever we cast a black spell, and turns all of our black mana pips into Phyrexian mana, so we can pay two life rather than pay a black. Lisa, Shroud of Dusk, has the ability that doesn't really matter too much since she's not our commander but also comes with lifelink and flying and takes two life whenever a player casts a spell. Zatalpa is a keyword soup wall coming strapped with flying, double strike, vigilance, trample, and indestructible, all on a 4-8 body. Yargle is Yargle. Massacre Girl has the potential to be a board wipe, dealing minus one, minus one to every other creature and stacking the effect every time something dies to it. Tetsamok is a 6-6 with Death Touch for some reason, who lets us pay a single black and reveal him from our hand to put prey counters on creatures, then kills all those creatures when he finally enters the battlefield. Evra is a 4-4 lifelinker that can swap her power with our life total for just 4 generic mana, letting us hit for massive damage out of nowhere. We have Vona, a vigilant lifelinker that can tap and take 7 of our life to kill any non-land permanent, 
but only on our turn. Timurit's toughness grows by whatever our devotion to black happens to be, while also letting us exile cards from graveyards, granting us one life for each creature he hits. Razaketh is a beefy 8-8 flying trampler that lets us pay two life and sacrifice a creature to search our deck for any card and put it into our hand. The pair of Krav and Regna can tutor for each other whenever one is played. With Regna being a flying angel that gives us two 1-1s one on the end step if we gained life that turn, and Krav being a demon that lets us pay and sacrifice creatures to draw cards, gain life, and put counters on himself. Demon Lord Belzenlock and Kothofed both draw us cards, with Belzenlock giving us non-land cards off the top of our deck when he TBs, repeating himself again and again if we get cards with CMC 4 or greater and pinging us for 1 damage each time and Kothofed drawing us a card and losing us a life each time a permanent owned by another player is put into the graveyard. Combal drains our opponents for two life whenever they cast non-creature spells. Ariel makes knight tokens and can blow creatures up by tapping down untapped knights we control. Visara the Dreadful can tap to kill any creature, and Offenza bolsters one every time a non-token creature enters the battlefield under our control, and Gerard Capuchin gains us life based on how many cards target opponent has in hand and can tap creatures down when he attacks. Baird gives us a pseudo ghostly prison effect, taxing our opponents one mana for every creature that they want to attack us with. Kelleth puts a plus one plus one counter on Arvad every time he attacks, which pairs nicely with Arvad's lifelink. Besides, every knight needs a horse, right? Gonti takes cards off of our opponent's libraries for us to use, even after Gonti has left the field. Traxos is an aggressively costed 7-7 trampler for four generic mana though he does enter the battlefield tapped and only untaps when we play historic spells. Luckily, legendary spells are considered historic, so untapping him really isn't a problem. Athreos, Shroud Veiled, is another indestructible god, not counting as a creature until our devotion to white and black is seven or higher. On our end step, he places a coin counter on a creature, putting that creature into play under our control should it die or go into exile with the counter on it. King Makar exiles creatures when he untaps and makes us a gold token each time he does, which can be sacrificed for one mana of any color. Bantu the Glorified is an indestructible god with menace who can only attack and block if we lost a creature this turn. But for one in a black, we can sacrifice a creature to scry one, making each opponent lose a life and gain us a life. Pair her with Athreos and we can have the same creature continuously die and come back in a cruel mockery of life. Our last creature is Egon, god of death. Another 6-6 death toucher, he makes us exile cards from our grave on our upkeep, sacrificing himself and drawing us a card if we can't. If we don't want that, we can also play him as the Throne of Death, a legendary artifact that mills one card from our deck each turn and can exile creatures from our grave to draw us cards. Moving on to sorceries, we have Board the Weatherlight and Search for Glory. Board grabs us any historic card from the top five cards of our library with historic cards being considered legendaries, artifacts, and sagas. And Search lets us tutor our deck for a snow permanent, a legendary card, or a saga, as well as gaining us life for any snow mana used to cast this. Most of that doesn't matter. We, we run it exclusively to tutor for a legendary card. We don't have any snow permanents or snow lands. Urza's Ruinous Blast, Yogmoth's Vile Offering, and Primeval's Glorious Rebirth are all legendary sorceries, meaning we can only cast them if we control a planeswalker or a legendary creature. Ruinous Blast exiles all non-legendary non-land permanents. Vile Offering reanimates any single creature or planeswalker from a grave to the field under our control while also destroying a creature or planeswalker before exiling itself. And the Glorious Rebirth puts all legendary permanents from our graveyard onto the battlefield. Our two remaining sorceries are Razaketh's Rite, an overcosted demonic tutor that can be cycled away for a single black, and Day of Judgment, for when everything positively absolutely needs to die right now. For instance, our removal suite includes Anguish Unmaking, Utter End, and Feed the Serpent. Anguished and Utter End can exile any non-land permanent that's giving us trouble, while Feed can only hit creatures or planeswalkers. The final instant is Gorio's Vengeance, which allows us to reanimate any of our legendary creatures for a turn before forcing them to exile themselves. Thanks to the legend rule being spread to also include planeswalkers, we have four. Kaya, Bane of the Dead, and Kaya the Inexorable are our two representatives of the Ghost Assassin. 
Bane of the Dead helps us get around Hexproof, while Inexorable gives us insurance when our things die, point blank targeted removal, and an emblem that lets us cast free legendary spells from literally anywhere once a turn. Soren, Vengeful Bloodlord, gives all of our creatures lifelink on our turn. A nice way to replenish all the life that we've been paying so far. As well as acts as a reanimator if we need him to. Liliana, Dreadhorde General, draws us cards whenever our creatures die, makes chump blocking zombies, forces sacrifices from everyone, and can end games when her ultimate decimates our opponent's boards. Do not expect her to stay. One of my favorite bits of this deck are the enchantments, which are all legendary. We run three shrines, the Hondens of Cleansing Fire and Night's Reach, and the Sanctum of Stone Fangs. Cleansing Fire gains us two life for every shrine we control. Knight's Reach makes a target opponent discard a number of cards equal to the amount of shrines we control, and Stone Fangs takes life from our opponents and gives us life equal to the shrine count that we have. It isn't a straight up drain, but it's passable. And also, to cut the comments off at the pass, yes, I'm aware of the White Sanctum, its ability wasn't worth running, and the minor increase in value from the other shrines was negligible. We also pack On Sarah's Wings, an aura that gives us the legendary status, as well as plus one plus one, flying, vigilance, and lifelink. And finally, Oath of Kaya, which does three damage to any target and gains us three life when it comes down, and drains anyone for two life when they attack a planeswalker we control. Moving on to artifacts, our only non-legendary artifact is Talisman of Hierarchy. That's right y'all, no soul ring. The Talisman taps for a colorless or can deal one damage to us when tapping for a white or a black. Past that we have the Cauldron of Eternity, the Thran Temporal Gateway, Hero's Podium, Bolus's Citadel, Nyx Lotus, and Weatherlight. Cauldron returns creatures from our grave to the battlefield and puts all of our dead creatures back into our deck. Thran Temporal Gateway lets us pay four to cheat historic permanence into play. The Podium boosts all of our legendary creatures by plus one plus one for each other legendary creature that we have, as well as digs into our library to find a legendary creature to put into our hand. Bolus' Citadel lets us cast spells off the top of our deck with life rather than mana. Nyx Lotus adds mana of any one color equal to our devotion to that color, and Weatherlight is a vehicle that basically casts Board the Weatherlight every time it deals combat damage. And that's all of our non-land permanents. Moving on to our land base, we still aren't done with legendary cards. Urborg, Tomb of Yogmoth, turns all lands into swamps, in addition to their other types, turning Shieldred's Swamp Walk on and improving some of our lands. Untaidake taps for two colorless at the cost of two life while the caveat is that the mana can only be spent on legendary spells. Our last legendary land is Dark Depths, which we run in partner with Thespian Stage to cheat in the 2020 Indestructible Flying Legendary Merit Lage token. Command Tower, Godless Shrine, Vault of Champions, Silent Clearing, Orzhov Guildgate, and Scoured Barons can all tap for either of our colors with their own upsides and downsides. Idyllic Grange and Witch's Cottage are non-basic lands that come with their respective land types, Plains for the Grange, Swamp for the Cottage, entering tapped unless we control three basics of their types, and giving us an extra effect if they come in untapped. The Grange puts a plus one plus one counter on a creature, and the Cottage will add a creature from our graveyard back to our hand. Marsh Flats and Evolving Wilds are able to fetch lands from our deck with Wilds limited to just basics, but the Flats looking for land types and Castle Lockthwain can draw us cards, then damage us equal to how many cards we have in hand. Round things out with 9 Swamps and 12 Plains, and we are ready to go. Thank you all for joining me on today's deck tech. Arvad is a ton of fun due to the versatility he brings and the amount of selection that he offers, so feel free to experiment with your favorite legendary creatures and let me know in the comments. I've already got a handful of cards that I'm eyeing for myself, like Day of Destiny and... Blackblade Reforged. Be sure to like the video, shoot us a sub, and never miss an upload when you ring that little bell. Later y'all!